Hello everyone. Uh, I, today I am going to talk about uh, reworking observability in Ceph. It is basically a use case of distributed tracing. Um, so let's get started. A uh, little bit about me. I was an outreach intern for summer 2019. And uh, I worked on adding distributed tracing library Jaeger to Ceph. Uh, currently, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm taking on the same project and working more on it as an associate software engineer in Red Hat. Uh, um, I like exploring cultures, tech, science, nerding on books and discussions. Uh, so let's get started. So, what all things we will cover. Uh, basically, I'll uh, provide a basic overview of Ceph architecture uh, that will bring us on the same page uh, of, uh, um, if, uh, uh, that will bring us on the same page that um, we understand the terminology associated with, uh, uh, with the, the project. Then, uh, We'll, uh, I'll describe the problem that uh, arises uh, in distributed systems such as Ceph, um, that is uh, the problem of context propagation. Then uh, after describing a bit about the problem, then uh, we'll see the solution, that approach the, uh, for the solution uh, uh, for uh, solving that problem. Uh, which is uh, distributed tracing. Then I'll uh, describe uh, a bit about uh, Jaeger, the, uh, the application that we picked for, um, so, uh, for, uh, for applying this approach. Then um, I'll, talk, uh, I'll uh, present a few, a few slides talking about how it's um, looking uh, or how, uh, how we are seeing the, um, uh, seeing the library perform for distributed tracing um, for, uh, for Ceph. Uh, then I'll talk a bit about the key, channel, key challenges that I identified working, uh, working on Jaeger for Ceph. Uh, people can use that uh, for, uh, for adding distributed tracing library to any uh, kind of microservices they are working with. Uh, then we can have a short Q&A session. So let's get started. So a uh, brief introduction of Ceph architecture. So uh, Ceph consists of client libraries such as LibRados, LibRBD, uh, uh, RGW. So uh, these uh, libraries are used to uh, communicate with the clients. And uh, once uh, we have uh, the object, uh, it, they take input from the clients uh, as objects, and then they communicate with LibreDOS, which is uh, which will transform our uh, object uh, into the form that is understandable by uh, by uh, the internal uh, parts of Ceph. Uh, suppose uh, uh, internal uh, internal parts of Ceph. Uh, suppose uh, or how can I describe it? Um, so uh, basically, it converts an uh, object into the uh, format which can be stored uh, into the uh, backend of Ceph. So uh, the backend of Ceph consists uh, basically, uh, um, um, basically consists of a monitor, uh, monitors. Then uh, there are object storage uh, demons. Then there's metadata server. There is Redos for communication. Uh, for uh, intelligent handling of data, so uh, once um, so uh, when when we perform a read or write operation, uh, the client uh, the client actually uh, uh, what happens is client uh, has a cluster map uh, which uh, which uh, which it takes from the uh, monitor, which uh, consists of whole overview of the. Uh, of our cluster, uh, once uh, if the client has the cluster map, it knows which uh, from, uh, from where to communicate to get uh, retrieve our object from. So uh, uh, when we perform a, a read operation, uh, 
the client uh, uh, calculates where the object is stored and from there uh, the object is retrieved. The similar way uh, we can uh, do for write operations. Now, uh, about uh, so uh, Redos is the intelligence unit uh, that will uh, that will uh, identify uh, which are the optimum uh, pl uh, optimal places where the object should be stored. Uh, the OSDs or the object st storage demons are the are the uh, are the uh, in are the intelligence units that are j uh, lying just above the uh, uh, the. Uh, are physical devices that are uh, that are communicating uh, in between themselves to the monitors, and they are the ones that are handling the background uh, process, uh, the actions, um, the uh, the write, read, uh, backfill, recovery uh, operations uh, for uh, healthy communication between. Uh, between our, our whole uh, cluster. So uh, now, what uh, what problem arises in these distributed system is uh, since these pro uh, processes are uh, so uh, distributed, there is async operations happening. There is a lot of context uh, uh, context context propagation happening uh, at one instance, and uh, these um, uh, these context uh, are even uh, uh, not in monolithic nature. That means uh, they are uh, not threaded uh, in. Uh, uh, in one uh, as a one operation so uh, when uh, so when we want to debug a uh, uh, our process. What happens is uh, we are not able to identify the uh, the origin of our failure. So in that uh, case, what uh, we generally do in distributed systems is we uh, go for uh, seeing the logs. But uh, since uh, it, there are so many uh, uh, intelligence uh, devices in uh, participating in um, Participating in distributed system, that it becomes difficult for um, for us uh, for us to uh, look uh, to identify the system where to look um, and then uh, see the logs there and identify the cause of failure. So, uh, as I talked about. Uh, that we can't attach debugger to four different processes and try to step through the debug request in that environment. And uh, uh, we can't have logging libraries um, for sample uh, sampling logging excessively. OK. Um, discrete. Uh, discrete and distributed requests and events often fail because of multiple triggers across different distributed components. So, uh, as I as I talked about that, uh, when we are using a distributed system, we uh, as a developer would be facilitated if we had some tool to identify the abnormalities in the system. Uh, if we can uh, see that uh, which process is uh, uh, taking a longer time or which uh, if we can see the trace of how our uh, context is flowing that would ease us uh, in identifying uh, which is the origin of our failure so uh, for uh, for that uh, an approach that we can use is distributed uh, tracing. So what happens in distributed tracing is we, uh, uh, when our service starts, uh, it assigns a unique identifier uh, to each request uh, at each uh, request point um, 
when it is propagating. So uh, suppose uh, our process A is our starting uh, point of our service. Uh, we attach a unique identifier to uh, that process and then that uh, unique identifier uh, uh, will propagate to subsequent process. So uh, when uh, with these attached uh, identifier, uh, we also can, uh, we also propagate the timing, the events, and uh, if we want to attach some metadata uh, uh, associated with our function, suppose we want to uh, see uh, uh, what is uh, the, um, the stored, uh, the flag options uh, that uh, the, the right uh, or some, some indicator for whether an operation uh, has successfully um, executed or not, we can store them uh, as tags. And uh, uh, what, uh, what Jaeger would do is, uh, at the end, it will stitch all these uh, spans, the, uni uh, the um, individual, uh, these spans, uh, uh, these individual uh, units that uh, were propagated for each process and form us uh, a trace. So a trace is a is actually demonstrating. Okay, so our process started from uh, point A. It go went to point B. It uh, went to point C. And uh, okay, uh, so we uh, we at D it is not uh, showing us uh, uh, the metric that was desired at that point. Or uh, at D it is taking uh, uh, more than usual uh, usually what it should have uh, taken. Uh, uh, so uh, by uh, by uh, by seeing this visual interpretation of how our process is traveling, we can identify uh, our uh, our performance issues in system, our uh, where uh, where our um, where our um, our storage um, where our um, process is failing or our OSDs is are getting down. So uh, how. Talking a bit about how Jaeger uh, performs uh, Jaeger's architecture, uh, Jaeger consists of, so our, we added instrumentation to our application. So uh, once the instrumentation has been done, uh, uh, we are going to use a vendor neutral API, which is open tracing. Um, uh, once, uh, okay. Uh, prior to that, I'll describe why uh, uh, we chose open tracing and Jaeger. So, uh, open tracing is a vendor neutral uh, library. Uh, when, by this, I mean that uh, it, uh, we can attach different uh, backend support for, uh, as a tracer. So, what a tracer does is it, st uh, it collects all the spans and then stitches it together to form a trace. So, uh, when we add instrumentation using the open tracing library, uh, 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 we can have a different backend support other than Jaeger as well. Uh, so uh, taking that uh, in mind, uh, for future use case, we can have uh, maybe different uh, tracer attached to um, the same instrumentation that we, do we had done. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, we, secondly, why we are using Jaeger, I'll highlight that a bit later. Uh, but first, um, uh, so uh, we have to just start a tracer. Once the tracer is started, uh, the open tracing API, wherever we have instrumented our spans, uh, at those points, uh, the spans would be created. And once uh, we uh, once we uh, uh, once we uh, once we open the open tracing uh, sorry Jaeger UI we can see those spans uh, we can see those spans um, converted into trace uh, so what happens is uh, when these spans are collected by Jaeger client and uh, this Jaeger client will then uh, send the uh, 
spans to Jaeger uh, agent, which will uh, then communicate those spans uh, in uh, UDP thrift uh, protocol uh, as a thrift protocol and send it to a Jaeger collector. Now, Jaeger collector is the one that will stitch all the spans together um, see, uh, by uh, looking into uh, the unique identifier uh, stitched uh, at each process. Uh, now the uh, the support uh, what advantage we have with Jaeger is it provides an always on tracing uh, support. So uh, basically, uh, uh, in past, Ceph was using blocking, uh, in which we had to uh, we can only in, uh, we can only see the traces when uh, by switching on blocking and then we have to switch blocking off but uh, with jaeger we can use uh, jaeger in in production as well it uh, it, it can be an always on uh, sam uh, tracing uh, library and if we don't want to have that overhead of uh, a, a tracing library we can uh, have uh, the sampling rate reduced to zero that can uh, that can uh, that can curb out uh, any additional performance overhead that a library uh, tracing library can produce even uh, jaeger is part about sampling so if uh, there are 10000 requests uh, uh, that are being produced so it will it will um, it will identify which uh, which uh, which span to take and then uh, which traces to uh, take and then uh, present it over the UI. You can even uh, configure if you want to have uh, adaptive sampling, probabilistic sampling, uh, uh, which you can uh, uh, see more on Jaeger documentation. Then, uh, so for starting uh, up a trace, you just need to pass a configuration file as config YAML, uh, where we you can uh, specify um, the type of sampling you want. If you want to have a database uh, attached, the uh, and uh, and uh, if you want to enable logging. Uh, once the tracer is started, you, uh, these are some instances of uh, how a span can be added. Um, the, the interesting thing is, uh, this is the OSD path, uh, input output path that I uh, I worked on tracing. Uh, you can see that uh, over the horizontal bar, it is uh, showing the time duration uh, of uh, uh, how of when the spans are recorded and the duration of the spans. Um, so. Um, then uh, this is a trace uh, consisting of uh, the OSD input output path, uh, which is specifying that the request was uh, started, it was enqueued, and so so on so forth. We can see how much uh, time it is uh, taking for each operation. Uh, and once uh, you want to have more details, so uh, you can see there are a matrix such as tags, logs, where you can add uh, any specific uh, parameter that you want to uh, see as a visualization. This uh, this is the visu visualization uh, um, visu visualization that uh, Jaeger uh, community is currently de developing. Is you can see there's an experimental feature, uh, uh, experimental showing in the visualization. Then um, I talked. Okay. Okay. And it's always a bit of a pain to match the historic ops because primary and secondary OSDs. So yeah. I have plans to implement what you were just showing with, with the stands to, to span the, the whole client operation across all the Yeah. OSDs. Yeah, it's a work in progress. So uh, uh, I think uh, I, so the basic, uh, basically there is a problem in. Uh, uh, we are working on uh, making it uh, for long term support uh, shippable jaeger along with open tracing once that is in place you can see uh, there is a trace uh, trace point i have uh, you can see this trace 
So it, like that, uh, once uh, the, uh, support is added for uh, making Jaeger and open tracing shippable with Ceph, uh, we can easily instrument uh, Ceph uh, as per our requirement as well. And some of the, uh, uh, some of the important um, points uh, that we uh, generally uh, face uh, issues with, we'll have instrumentation for that in place. Yeah, you don't have to do that. Uh, that all is taken care by Jaeger. You just need to add instrumentation codes such as I did here, adding a span. So here you can see uh, I'm starting a, a span and then passing a child of uh, function. So what it is, uh, it is, uh, uh, it is, uh, it is creating a child uh, span for OSD parent span. So that OSD parent span I have uh, created uh, at the uh, common Ceph part. So that is propagating uh, to whole process. So in that manner, you can pick up apart from that. Always. And it also has backward compatibility with Zipkin. So the current, uh, uh, we can also have, uh, I, uh, I haven't tested this yet, but Jaeger uh, uh, also provides uh, you, uh, backward compatibility with Zipkin. That means all the, uh, uh, all the trace, uh, trace points that we currently have in Ceph, we could have uh, that rendered over Jaeger UI. We just, uh, there is a specific port that they have uh, dedicated for that. Uh, so some of the struggles that I uh, identified while working on this project were that uh, you have to handle spans with caution. If uh, um, there can only be one parent span uh, in the whole context, uh, you can have multiple child span uh, follows from span, but uh, if you uh, if you have uh, an open span, there is a probability uh, that uh, it might not be uh, rendered or it not, might not uh, create a complete trace. So uh, the closing of spans are important, and uh, there is some uh, yet to de develop features that Jaeger has. Uh, so. It, uh, again, uh, it doesn't provide direct it cyclic graph-based uh, model. Parent span is only there. So maybe they'll provide that support in future. And that. Thank you.